Welcome to Force.comcast episode 10, Avoiding Dereference of Null Object Errors. One of the most common errors that is seen on the platform is the error which is attempt to dereference a null object. Uh, many new developers starting out with the platform find this quite cryptic um, and you can get this error in a number of different places when you're trying to work, uh, work with objects uh, in Apex. And so um, a few people contacted me just asking if I could do a quick video on some of the ways in which you could avoid that. So the code we have in front of us, uh, we've got three example methods and I have a test class with three example tests. And if we run the tests right now, we'll see that we have three different test errors coming back, all with attempt to dereference an null object. So let's work through and fix these. And this will show us three different examples of how we can avoid this error. So test example one is working with the example one method. And if we go here and have a look, the example one method is just adding on to a list of integers that we've defined, uh, the current uh, date time in milliseconds from GMT. Um, so it's uh, just adding on a number. So why is this giving us a dereference error? Well. The issue we've got here is that if we have a look through our code, we haven't actually instantiated the list anywhere. We've defined it, uh, but it has yet to be instantiated with a value. So if we go in here and uh, new list of integer type and instantiate this, this will avoid the uh, error coming back for us because what we're trying to do is it is this part this add method that is causing the problem. We're attempting to call the add method on what is still a null object as uh, we haven't created it in memory. And that is what is throwing our error with the dereference. So if we now rerun the tests, test example one is passing and it's all working for us. So that's uh, a common example of where you will get a dereference error is you've uh, created a variable, you yet to instantiate it. Um, a lot of people get those uh, when working with Visual Force pages um, and Visual Force controllers where they're trying to uh, save a value up, but the uh, item they're saving to is yet to be uh, instantiated. So example two, if you have a look at the test here, uh, it's also erring, it's telling us it has the wrong size. So what's happening here? So in example two, what we've got is we've got a list of strings that we're correctly instantiating this time. So we're not having that error. And what it's doing is it's looping through every string in the names list, which we have up here. So we've got a series of keys, A, B, C, and D. So, and we're then retrieving the correct person from our name map. And if we look here, the name map is a map of strings to people or to person objects. Um, and we've got A is a person called Alice, B is a person called Bob, and C is a person called Carol. And notice that there's no D uh, key here. So this is, uh, again, a common example you'll use if you're doing um, uh, SQL queries where you're retrieving maps of IDs to um, objects, or if you're looping through um, child relationships uh, from a query, is you'll attempt to retrieve a record um, and it won't be there. So what's happening here is that when we try and call p.name, so if we have a look at our error list, it's giving us the error line 29 column 1. So if we look at line 29, the error is in fact coming from when we're trying to call the name method on the person, because when we try and retrieve the person from the map, the person doesn't exist. So Apex maps have a very useful method called uh, contains key. So what we're going to do is we're just going to check before we do the call that if name map dot contains key s. So if the key is in the system or is it within the map rather, we can add it in there. And otherwise we're just going to ignore it. So let's just save up that update now. and rerun the tests. So in Apex, when a map cannot find a record, uh, it returns null. 
as per the documentation. And so when we're doing this method here, the name map does not contain the key S, which is at that point D in our list. Uh, and so it returns null. And then when we're trying to call name on a null value, it doesn't return. And now we can see that test example two is also passing. So that's again, another common error is uh, people get dereference errors when they're using uh, maps and trying to retrieve things and then call a method upon retrieved item. So it's really, really simple for you to just add that quick if statement in there. Um, and if you're looping through as well, it'll also save you looping through some items that don't need to be looped through. The final example we've got here is example three. Um, and this is just uh, an example of how to test your code properly to be able to catch null parameters. So when writing tests for Apex code, you should always make sure that you test your methods with having null parameters passed in. Uh, because if something fails somewhere else, so if you're trying to send in a, an item that is in fact null by a mistake, then um, it's going to be able to handle that and not just throw an exception. So what this method is doing here, it, or what this test is doing, is it's just checking that if we throw in a null item, we'll get a default item back. So what we're saying is if we give a null string in here uh, in trying to retrieve a particular person from our name map, then we should never return null, we should always return something. Uh, and this is, again, a, a good example if you were using uh, the ID uh, key and you wanted to retrieve a record and return a default. So what we can do in maps is you can use the null object as a key. So null is a valid uh, key for uh, strings within maps or for any objects within maps because null is a valid object. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new person and we're just going to call this uh, default. And when we save this up now, what this is going to do is that when we loop, uh, when we go into the map and try and retrieve an item which we don't have the key for, so uh, when we try and retrieve null, um, rather than retrieving an empty value and then trying to get the name on it, this will just return a default value for us, uh, which will happen to be default. So let's rerun the tests again for the last time. And voila, all of our tests are passed. So again, another example of how you can avoid um, getting null dereference errors by just setting defaults and ensuring that your maps have uh, a null key in there. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you have any feedback, please tweet it to us at force.comcast. Um, and please subscribe to the YouTube channel to continue watching.